Welcome back to the arcade. Today we're working on my Valley Star Trek pinball machine. And this was the very first game, that uh, coin op game that I ever bought. I bought it back in 1982, which is uh, 31 years ago. And the game, of course, was uh, copyrighted in 78. So I think that's the year it was released. So that was uh, 35 years ago. And uh, Here's something of a little time capsule here. The, the auction that I bought it in, I still have the original card that was on it. It was the game number 65. Uh, I just flipped it back up and it's been that way all these years. So, uh, the game was working when I first got it years ago and a few years Later, it developed uh, the battery on the MPU uh, leaked cadmium. It had the rechargeable uh, nickel cadmium battery on it, and uh, it created acid. Well, not acid, but cadmium damage on the MPU. So I fixed that, and it's been working uh, pretty much uh, all these years without any problems. I did replace it with a uh, nickel cadmium phone battery years ago and uh, I should have moved it uh, from the MPU but I didn't. I, I tie wrapped it to it um, and it did start leaking again and this time uh, it, it didn't do any damage to the MPU. Um, but the damage was done to the light driver board right below it. Now it's possible that back then, I can't remember, it's been so many years ago, that when I did the initial fix to the MPU, that the damage may have been done to the light uh, board, but um, I, I can't remember if I took it off and, and cleaned it up or whatever. So anyway, I took it off this time because I, I had quite a few feature lights that weren't working um, and some that were on all the time and I when I pulled the board off I, I seen the traces on the back they would just eat up so I cleaned it up real good fixed the traces put it back in and now everything is working 100 percent again so now comes to what I'm gonna do right now this has the production back glass in it which Captain Kirk and the crew are wearing the uniforms from the uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture which came out um, in 79 I believe I have to check that but somewhere around that time and um, when they first came out with this game the first ones that they made the first 15 or maybe 20 uh, I've heard both accounts the back glass was almost identical to what you see now except they were uh, wearing the original uniforms from the original Star Trek TV show and of, of course the uh, it didn't have the, the Klingon battlecruiser in here and I've even heard that uh, this ball right here which supposedly they're shooting the phaser at if you if you notice he's pointing at it the phaser is in the other hand and it's pointed up in the air originally it was supposed to be uh, a phaser shooting a humanoid and uh, I guess they didn't like that so they changed it at any rate fast forward to 2013 and uh, now they have uh, finally reproduced the prototype back glass which has the uh, the crew in the original uniforms and uh, so I went ahead and I, I bought one and it came the other day and uh, also bought the set of prototype plastics which uh, is different because the uh, character Ilea from the motion picture uh, was not originally on the uh, the prototype uh, and I always knew that uh, they had 
originally had done this and that they changed it to coincide with the movie. But the playfield, if you look at the playfield, the Enterprise has the original nacelles from the original TV show. So I always felt that even though they made the change to the movie, um, they, they, they should have changed in the cells to reflect the Enterprise from the movie also. And also, uh, if you look up top there, Spock and the, uh, the, the lady up there are pretty much wearing the original uniforms rather than the, um, the movie uniforms. So I always thought that uh, this should have been left alone and should have been produced as the TV show pinball but it didn't so it is what it is so anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this original production back glass out and we're going to install the new uh, prototype back glass and the prototype um, plastics and pretty much turn this back into the game it was originally supposed to be designed for well, my original back glass is in very good condition. Uh, doesn't have any condition problems whatsoever that I can see. Uh, certainly no cracking or anything. The, um, the lift channel, which just goes on the bottom edge of the glass here, it looks like it had some type of black, not really tape. I've heard people say it used friction tape. And I've heard some people say they put a piece all the way across. I've heard some people say they just put a little piece in a couple places. Uh, this one appears to have one little piece on, on either end. Uh, and that's all. So I think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to try the electric tape route. Uh, I bought a, uh, a new uh, lift channel and the new plastic uh, which goes on the the, bot, the top and the and the sides. Uh, got those from Marco Specialties. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put our original back glass out of the way. And once we unpack the new back glass, we'll probably pack this up in the the box that it came in and put it aside. And uh, who knows, we may use it one day if we ever find another Star Trek pinball machine that. Uh, needs to be restored. Okay, well here's the box with the new back glass in it. I'd already opened it the other day when I first got it and checked it out. And uh, everything looked fine. So, what I need to do here. Didn't know when I was going to be able to get back to it, so I sealed it up again pretty good. here with the new Star Trek plastics, uh, which is the complete set. Put them all out of the way for now. And then we'll go ahead and take this off. I don't know how to reuse that when I put the old back glass in here. As you can see, uh, it looks real nice. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's pretty close to an original prototype. Uh, I'm sure it's 
it's going to vary a little bit. It's very hard to get everything exact. Uh, but uh, it looks like to me, not, not ever seeing one in person, that they've done a pretty good job on it. So once we get uh, everything installed on it, the lift bar and the, the trim, we can put it in place and see what it looks like. Well, it looks like we're going to have to put this project on hold for uh, a few days. I uh, opened up the new lift channel and um, turns out that the, the new back glass is silk screened on eighth of an inch glass. The original is on three sixteenth of an inch glass. So I had ordered the, um, the lift channel for three sixteenth glass and as you can see it's it's just way too much play. I mean, you could probably put several layers of electrical tape or something on there and, and get by with it, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and order a new set of the eighth of an inch uh, channel and, and plastic uh, channel. So uh, we'll just put this on hold and work on something else and, until it arrives. All right, well, we got a package in the mail today. Uh, we got our uh, eighth of an inch lift uh, channel in the mail today, along with the eighth of an inch plastic trim for the top and sides of the back glass. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and install this today. Uh, Marco Specialties was, was out of the, the channel, so um, I went ahead and I found them online at Action Pinball. So these uh, came from Action Pinball. And of course the back glass is a CPR, which is a classic playfield reproductions. Uh, they're from up in Canada. And they do excellent work. This is the first thing I've, uh, one of the products that I've bought. And I'm real pleased with it so far. The only thing that, uh, I found fault with is it did not say on their website that it was screened on eighth of an inch glass. So I had already ordered the, uh, the lift channel for the 316th, which is what the original production run of Valley Star Trek uh, uses, was the 316th uh, glass. Now, it's very possible since they did find the original prototype to use to, to make this by that maybe the original prototype was uh, originally on one-eighth glass. And doing a little research, I did find out that um, a lot of the early Stern and Valley pinballs were actually on eighth of an inch glass. So there you go. Uh, don't know if it was or not, but it doesn't matter now. Also, they had 3M friction tape. Uh, I've read where a lot of people just use electrical tape because the lift bar or the lift channel, when you put it on, it's um, not a, a super tight fit. It'll, it'll slide right on the glass. So you put this friction tape on the edge of the glass and then you shove it on and that, that gives a little tension and also, um, I guess, also insulates it so you don't have metal uh, right on the glass. So what we're going to do, we'll open up our friction tape. And this is basically, I haven't seen this stuff in a long time, but I have seen it before. Instead of electric tape, it's a cloth type tape. So it's a cloth tape and it's sticky on one side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a few small pieces here. And we're going to put one on this end of the glass. Take another piece.
this end. And I think I'm going to put one more piece in the middle. I looked on my original glass and it looks like it, it only has a piece on each end. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick one right in the middle. And I believe that's all I need to hold this trim on. So we'll find out. Now of course the trim this, this wide lip right here goes to the front because that's what you use to pick the glass up when you're removing it. So, what I do here, and that is very loose. So I think I need some more tape on there. So because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and put it almost all the way across. Better if I had to just put one one solid piece all the way across. That's okay. This will work. Give that a try and see if that helps it any. Well, it helps, but it still needs more. So, let's go ahead and we'll just run another piece the full length right on top of that and see what happens. I'm hoping that's not going to make it too tight. Let's see. And I think that's really all we need. It's still not going to come off on its own. It's not on super tight. Just remember, never pick it up and hold it upside down by this trim, and you'll be okay. I don't think it's any going to be necessary to uh, do anything else with that. So I think we're going to be good there. So now let's go ahead and put the uh, other trim pieces on. Of course, we've got one long one which goes across the top, and two short ones which goes on the sides. So let's go ahead and put the top one on next. And there's no 
front of back to this. It's just a channel. side on. out the way we're going to put our old back glass back in it but for now we're just going to move it over here out the way and let's go ahead and fire the game up and see what it looks like back glass from CPR Classic Playfields Reproduction uh, you can go to their website classicplayfields.com and uh, they have quite a few amazing products and this is just one of them now they are currently um, have a sign up list for people who want a new play field and of course my game has a fair play field uh, it has a little bit of wear in places but it's not bad but uh, I went ahead and signed up for it and uh, I believe I'm going to go ahead and when, when they do finally get them produced I'm going to get me one and I'm going to go ahead and put it on here so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I also got a, a set of their uh, reproduction plastics which also includes the prototype plastics. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and take the prototype plastic and uh, just install them on the game to complete the uh, prototype look on, on my pinball. I'll leave the, the other ones in the package for the time being and uh, when they come out with the new playfield 
then I'll probably go ahead and install it and then I'll go ahead and put all the new plastics in and that'll pretty much update the the game and get it in as good a condition as you can for a game of this age. So let's go ahead and uh, sort out those prototype plastics and put them on next. Okay well I've unpackaged the uh, plastic set and I've noticed something that uh, I don't know if it's really a problem. I uh, don't know if it's supposed to be that way but um, if, if you look at, let's take the Alia for instance. Uh, here's the original and here is the, uh, the reproduction. Now granite um, this is on the light right now and this one still has the backing paper on it but uh, just by looking at it it looks like the blue in the background is a whole lot darker shade uh, even the the reproduction plastic that replaces it uh, the, the blue is obviously I don't know if the camera can pick it up but it is uh, actually doesn't look that different through the camera but looking at it with the naked eye it's, it's a quite a bit of difference same thing over here uh, as you can see the blue in the background is a lot darker now maybe that is because I haven't pulled the backing off yet uh, we'll see but it looks real uh, evident on on this piece right here um, as you can see it's definitely a different shade of uh, a blue it's darker and of course this is the replacement of the original and you can see it's the same thing uh, same thing with this other piece up here which this is the production run and this is the prototype um, and of course the same thing with the the rest of them even this piece right here on the pop uh, right here you notice it's a different shade of blue um, whether that matters or not I don't know I mean the, the lighter blue looks I think closer it's not a not an exact match with the play field but it is closer than than this blue is so uh, I'll go ahead and I'll pull the backing off the prototype pieces and put them under put them on under the light and we'll compare them then and see uh, if it really looks like that big of a difference. Okay, well here's the finished product. Uh, reproduction uh, prototype back glass from Classic Playfield Reproductions and the prototype uh, plastics or complete plastic set also done by uh, Classic Playfield Reproductions. Um, the only thing is I was just going to replace the prototype uh, plastics which is this one here and the other one of course is this one and, and this piece here. And the rest of them are identical to the uh, production but uh, there was a difference in the, the dark blue. The dark blue in the reproductions is a lot deeper or darker blue than the uh, uh, prototypes or the, or the new set and once I just replaced the prototypes it just didn't look right I mean it, on camera it doesn't look that different but um, you might be able to see the difference there it's, it's just a darker shade of blue now does that really matter well for somebody that's nitpicking I guess it does am I nitpicking uh, when it comes to Star Trek, maybe I do tend to nitpick just a little bit. But all in all, uh, it's still a beautiful job. They did, they did a, a fantastic job. Um, loving the, uh, the back glass. Uh, I've never seen one in person, an original, so I really can't compare. I've only seen or seen pictures of them. 
but um, it, it definitely meets with my approval um, and that's that's what counts ever since I found out about the prototype back glass I've always wanted one and knowing that there were only maybe 20 out there and I know I've seen pictures of one or two where they were flaking real bad and it really wasn't much left of them so I would imagine uh, prototype back glasses uh, are probably not that many out there that are at least in decent shape I'm sure there are a few and um, I would love to have one but don't think it'll ever happen in my lifetime so uh, this is the closest thing that I could get to it and I'm real pleased I'm, I'm happy that Classic uh, Playfield Reproductions took on the project um, I think they did a, a wonderful job like I say the the only complaint I, I can see and it's not really a complaint um, it's just that I wish they had a used uh, match that uh, blue on the plastics a little better but other than that uh, uh, I like it it's uh, I don't think I'll ever have a need to change it back now I'm just hoping that when they do the play field that they don't change the colors I hope to do a better job at matching the colors on the play field let's put it that way um, maybe it could stand to be darkened up just a little I don't know uh, I kind of like to uh, keep it as close to original as possible um, of course you can see that it's darkened up a little bit right here anyway from wear and just I don't know if that could be really cleaned out. I've, I've tried cleaning it, but I can't get it any cleaner. It's a little bit lighter looking right here where the, the uh, plastic protector is. And um, this Mylar protector that they put on, is, is, you can tell the difference. See how red it is under here. And see, you got all the ball swirls and everything here. Um, it, it really did do a good job of protecting the play field. Um, right around the uh the slingshots here so um but but you can tell the difference uh in the color and of course over 30 some years i'm sure there's been a little bit of fading going on too um whether the plastics did any fading i don't know but um bottom line i'm happy with it so uh cpr job well done okay there's only one thing left to do now let's play a game See, you can get an air ball with an old ballet. <laughs> 